Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> it's time to change your ribbon. Where's your typewriter? It's in the attic with my Peter Max posters. <laughs> See ya. Oh, Miss Fine, wait. Yes? <laughs> I've had an epiphany. Already? Just from doing this? <laughs> I've always resented my father for his total lack of concern for anyone's feelings but his own. He's always lived solely for his own pleasure. But maybe that ain't so bad, huh? I mean, maybe he's got the right idea. I mean, I'm a man. I have needs too, right? Oh, good, because I can use a couple of multiple epiphanies myself. <laughs> I got a problem. All right, honey, solve it yourself. It builds character. No, no. <laughs> Okay, Dad, here it is. I'm in a ballet class, and I don't care what you say. I love it, and I'm staying in. Well, son, you should do whatever makes you happy. Even if you called the school and demand they take me out of that class, I'm not leaving. I want you to do it. Would you let me live my own life? <laughs> For the love of God, I'm a ballerina. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, he is so lucky that he's got people that love and support him. Ow, oh, come here. Look how baggy his butt looks in those tights. <laughs> So you were saying you're a man, you got needs? Well, maybe I should just face the fact that my father fell in love with his secretary. And your sister fell in love with her chauffeur. And my grandfather married his maid. No sense breaking tradition. None that I can see. Wait. Something is missing. What? What? Oh, I know. doing here? I'm picturing myself in Miss Babcock's BMW. <laughs> I tell you, this jet lag is beginning to catch up with me. Oh, I know. I can hardly keep my eyes open. <sighs> yes, well, I'm feeling much better. Really? You look exhausted. Wouldn't want to spoil your stay in Paris. <laughs> no, I'm feeling much better, really. I, um, I took a sleep on the plane. Uh, Why didn't you? And miss the lobster caviar and make your own Sunday bar? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I'm gonna take a shower. Nigel should be here any minute. I thought we'd grab a quick bite at L'Orangerie. Try and talk some sense into him. <laughs> talk him out of that ridiculous nightclub business he's getting. <laughs> Miss Fine, were you going to just sit there and let me take my clothes off? Well, I didn't want to spoil my stay in Paris either. <laughs> but, well, let me make myself quite clear. I know that there's something going on between you and this nanny person, and I will not allow it. But uh, there is nothing going on between... Wait a minute. What do you mean, you won't allow it? You are a Sheffield, dear. This woman's not of our class. Oh, that is preposterous. Knock, knock. Oh, you've got to see this. Hello, Dolly, spelled down in SpaghettiOs. <laughs> I swear it poured right out of the can. I mean, is that freaky or what? Maxwell, if you pursue this, that, that, I will have no choice but to disinherit you. Well, I don't need your money, Mother, or your approval. And I'll do whatever the bloody hell I like. Oh, don't talk to your mother like that. Miss Fine, will you marry me? What? <laughs> Are you out of your... Oh, let us get a word in edgewise, lady. <laughs> <laughs> Maxwell, stop making a spectacle of yourself. Oh. Oh, did you think that was a spectacle? Oh, no, Mother. This is. Oh. oh, Mr. Sheffield, marry you. Oh, this is all so sudden. I mean, I'm really going to have to think about... Okay. <laughs> 
play was just excellent. Put in a seafood buffet and you've got yourself a hit. It's fine if you enjoyed it that much. How come you snuck out before the curtain call? Well, because nature called. And by the way, not to knock your theater, but two stalls, 600 women, it's like Tokyo in there. <laughs> I hate waiting for reviews. My stomach has been in knots all day long. Oh, we really don't have anything to be concerned about. I mean, whatever else he might be, Frank Bradley is a professional. Right. He's not going to let his personal feelings get in the way of his judgment. We're, We're doomed. doomed. <laughs> I thought these pictures were supposed to be of famous people. Who's Ethel Merman? Never heard of her. How about Mary Martin? It's me. Oh, look, here it is, here it is. Uh, I can't look. Just tell me which way his thumb is pointing. Well, it's time for Critic's Corner. Unfortunately, Frank Bradley is out with food poisoning tonight. Oh, oh, my. The finger sandwiches. I ate the finger sandwiches. Oops, that darn refrigerator. <laughs> so we went right to the theater to get the opinion of the common man. Hi. Friend, that's you! I know. Do I look a little chunky? <laughs> I loved it. It was a masterpiece. Compelling, riveting, a sheer enchantment. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Bartender, I think there's something wrong with your set. I sound so nasal. <laughs> it was a perfect evening of theater. Although adding a few stalls to the ladies' room wouldn't kill them. <laughs> Well, it looks like a hit to us. Uh, oh, thank you, Miss Fine. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Any time, Mr. Sheffield. Any time. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, I just love this play. More torches here. Ah, Sarah, by my fay, it waxes late. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Who the hell is Faye and why is she waxing during a party? <laughs> Good luck. Shall I play Romeo to your Juliet? Four, three, two. What took you so long? <laughs> All right, so now we're star-crossed lovers. Uh, let's get some physical realism into this, shall we? Oh, Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I mean, I'm going to put you on your balcony. OK. <laughs> All right. Now, Juliet is dreaming of her Romeo. Right. And she says... Hi, me. <laughs> oh, speak again, bright angel. Oh, Romeo. Romeo. Yes, no, uh, maybe we could have it a little more lilting, just a bit more melodic. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Melodic. <clears throat> oh, Romeo, Romeo. <laughs> yeah, just a little too melodic, I think. Uh, let me show you. Oh, OK, sure. He's gonna show us. <clears throat> oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Wow, you British guys really know how to play women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we did this play in college. Oh, you must have been the perfect Romeo. No, I was Friar Lawrence, actually. That's the problem, going to school with Jeremy Irons. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go on. Romeo, duff thy name and take all of me. I take thee at thy word. Call me but love and I'll be new baptized. You know, if I were directing this, I'd go in a whole different direction. <laughs> Good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Sleep dwell in thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Ah, oh, would I were sleep and peace so sweet to rest. You know, because this lovey-dovey stuff has just been done to death. <laughs> you know? Much better. Yeah, I, I think I'm starting to get the hang of it now. There, now you look like my little girl again. I'm not going. No guys will be the least bit interested in me. Good, then you have no problem being home by 10. 
Come on, Margaret. No boy in his right mind would be the least bit attracted to that ridiculous wig. <laughs> oh, Miss Fine, look at you. Well, they wouldn't take it back, and I didn't want it to go to waste. Are you sure you don't want to go out for ice cream? Hmm? Who said that? Oh, Niles, uh, we're going out for ice cream. Oh, I thought you were exhausted, sir. I drew you a bath in the jacuzzi with eucalyptus oil and a snifter of brandy. Well, I've got a second wind. I'll go hail a cab. Well, wouldn't want it to go to waste. Can you believe that guy? Two minutes ago, he was dead to the world. One look at this wig and he's ready for a double dip. I tell you, I don't know whether to be flattered or insulted. Look, what do you say we take in a movie as well, huh? Flattered it is. You know, I was him once. What happened, Miss Fine? What happened to my passion? Oh, I don't know. Maybe becoming too successful. You lose your passion. I know sometimes when I wake up in my mansion in my Ralph Lauren sheets and I look out my window at Park Avenue, I think, oh, maybe I'll just sleep in. Niles can get the kids ready for school. <laughs> but enough about me. Do you know what I'm gonna do, Miss Fine? Fire me? <laughs> I'm gonna get my passion back. Well, I'm right behind you, baby. <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna do is tell my brother, good show. Uh -huh. Then I'm gonna ring my mother and tell her to sod off. <laughs> and the passion part would kick in exactly where? Right, right now. All <laughs> right. I'm gonna go for it, Miss Fine. I'm gonna grab the brass ring. I'm gonna get back in touch and just do it. Go, grab, touch, do. Did I mention touch? Hey, for God's sakes, I'm in Paris with a beautiful woman. Uh. Come on, let's blow this nightclub and see where life takes us. Yep, taking the next plane was definitely the right thing to do. Can we switch flights in Rome shortly over in Amsterdam. We'll be home in uh, ooh, 19 hours. Yeah, it was definitely meant to be. Oh, oh. What the hell was that? Oh, just a little bump in the road. Would we hit a deer? We're in the air. <laughs> oh, you have to picture yourself going along a little country lane with a few dips and potholes. Oh, what the bloody hell was that? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Calm down. Ma said to always look at the stewardesses, that they'll let you know when there's something to worry about. Oh, my God! Everybody stay in your seats! Fasten your seats! Oh, my God. Oh, God, I never thought it was going to end like this. I did. I'm finally flying first class with a handsome millionaire. Of course the plane would go down. What else? All right, everybody, now, just stay calm. Everything is fine. Okay. Would you put your damn tray away? You want to get us all killed? Okay, okay. Oh, Mrs. Jeffield. I just want you to know that these last three years have been the best years of my life. Oh, God. My children. Oh, they adored you, Miss Fine. You know, now would be a good time to call me Fran. <laughs> Ow! Oh. I love you. Hello, uh, darling. Hmm. Uh, Miss mm. mm. uh, Fine. Uh, I mean, Fran. Uh, oh, I mean... Oh, what difference does it make what you call me after the honeymoon night? It's just gonna be... <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you got my message. I really wanted to see you. Uh, Miss Fine. Oh, I... Mr. Sheffield. You want to play that game? Okay. <laughs> You're the boss, and I'm the nanny. You give me a raise, and I'll give you one. Stop it! Stop it, Miss Fine. We're in your mother's house. So, the couch has protection. <laughs> Miss Fine, there's something I have to tell you. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Are you very upset with me? 
No, I want my parents to move in with us, too. Mommy, you hear that? We're moving on up to the east side. Oh. No, 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 Sylvia. I, I, I was just trying to explain to Miss Fine. Sylvia, the... why so formal? Call me Ma. We're family. Miss Pocha. <laughs> Sweetheart, I'm gonna make you so happy. The first thing you hear in the morning and the last thing you hear at night is gonna be my voice. Oh, look who's here! <laughs> oh, wait, I smeared you. Mother, what are you doing here? Well, I invited her, honey. Come on in. We gotta get to know each other better. Sit down, Ma. And if you stick to the plastic, don't get up quick, unless you need a waxing. <laughs> Would you like to take off your shoes, honey? I got a bunch of slippers from TWA. No, 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 thank you so much. I've got something far more comforting from the conch form. <laughs> Maxwell, I only came here because I know what you're up to. A mother doesn't raise a son for the four years before boarding school and come away with nothing. <laughs> oh, that was you for those four years. I thought it was Niles disguised as Kim Novak. <laughs> Maxwell, just admit that you're marrying this girl to spite me. Oh, hey, now wait a minute there, Ma. I've lived with this man for three years, and there's no way that he would ever use me like that or play with my feelings or hurt me so deeply. <laughs> that only a Caribbean cruise could make up for it. Well, you obviously don't know how much my son detests me. Go on, Max, we'll tell her. Oh, I don't detest you, Mother. I don't know you well enough. <laughs> All I do know is you made me angry enough to hurt someone I care very deeply about. Oh, you're so right, Maxwell. We've never been close. We don't talk. We... Perhaps we could work on that. But uh, not now, darling. Jean-Luc is waiting for me. <laughs> So, all this was just to torture me? Yeah. <laughs> was it as good for you as it was for me? Miss Fine, I'm... I'm sorry to have done this to you. But believe me, if I was going to marry anyone in the world to make my mother miserable, it would be you. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> There must be something I can do to make it up to you. No, there's really not. No, please, I insist, anything. Come on, you're insulting me. Are you sure? Well, maybe three things. <laughs> Don't tell Miss Babcock for 48 hours, I promise, Niles. <laughs> oh, and uh, someone's gonna have to tell Ma. I figured you'd want to do that personally. <laughs> and then the third thing is, well, you can return this. It's what I was gonna wear on our honeymoon night. Mm. Nothing in here but lip gloss. Uh, take a load off. Oh, thank you, but I'd, I'd just as soon stand. Oh, well, can you hold this? <laughs> I'm just getting ready for my lunch date. Another date? Already? Well, I gotta eat. This is, uh, <clears throat> this is all very awkward. I've uh, not had to have this conversation with the other nannies. Of course, they weren't nearly as attractive as you. Oh, well... <laughs> Um, <clears throat> as master of this house, there are certain things that I expect. Oh, Mr. Sheffield, maybe I should have read the fine print. Oh, no, no, Miss, Miss Fine, you're, you're taking this all wrong. Yeah. Uh, I, I need to talk to you about your boyfriend. Oh, I wouldn't call him my boyfriend. Well, he, he is a boy and he is your friend. Mr. Sheffield, are you sure you're in the right room? I mean, Maggie is two doors down. No, I've already had this talk with Maggie. Oh, well, I hope it went better than this. No, as a matter of fact, it didn't. Um, <laughs> Miss Fine, what I'm trying to say is, if you are intent on having a fling, then there are certain rules regarding the proper places for a fling to be flung. Mm-hmm. So I take it the previous nannies never, uh, flang? No, they, they were not flingers. 
Well, let me just clarify this. We are talking about having sex in my room, are we not? Oh, no, not, no, not us. <laughs> we already covered that. I assure you, Mr. Sheffield, I would never do anything to set a bad example for the children. Well, thank you for that, Miss Fine. Hmm. And I appreciate your discretion. Oh, well, thank you for holding my hair. <laughs> Any time. If you want, I can return the favor and wash that gray way. How long have you had that, anyway? Oh, it came in about the same time you did. <laughs> what a coincidence. What? You won the contest? Well, you want to call it a contest. <laughs> well, as far as your winning this contest is concerned, we'll sort this nonsense out in no time. Nonsense? Well, Miss Fine, you don't seriously think you actually won, do you? I mean, they were looking for a beautiful teenager. And lovely as you are, you're not exactly a teenager, eh? Well, I remember my graduation a lot better than some people that I won't spell it out for Y-O-U. Please, Miss Fine, you don't seriously expect me to believe you beat out hundreds of young girls just because of your kissing prowess? No, I beat them because I happen to be a fabulous kisser. <laughs> don't you think you've gone just a little overboard on the hyperbole? I'm wearing obsession. <laughs> Miss Fine, this is insanity. There's absolutely no way you could have won that contest legitimately. Oh, no? No. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, you asked for it, Buster. <laughs> hmm. Hey, Phil, I know that I'm not crazy. That king was coming on to me. Well, of course he was, Miss Fine. Of course he was. Anyone could see he was smitten with you. Wasn't he? Of course he was. He's a man. And unfortunately, some men are just not very good at expressing their feelings. <laughs> and I could see right through that, Sultan. Oh, yes, you'd start as his nanny, all right. You'd start working for him for a few years, and then eventually be on a first-name basis. And then <laughs> one day he'd come to realize you were more important to him than his work. And then... Then he'd tell you he loves you. And uh, when does that happen? Right now. I love you. What? Fran, I love you. <laughs>